coming up. It's flattening. It's the flattening of the curve. New York is teaming up with nearby states to create a plan to reopen. This is New York's coronavirus death toll passes 10,000. Plus, the polls are open. Essay election voting has begun. Find out where you can vote online. And we speak with Hendricks Chapel Dean Brian Conkle. Hear his advice for staying positive in hard times. Citrus TV News update starts right now. It's time to decide who's going to lead Syracuse University's Student Association. Good evening, I'm Augustus LaRue. You can now vote to decide SA's new president, vice president, and comptroller. To vote, students must log on to MySlice, look for student resources, and click Vote Now. A screen will then pop up showing the ballot. Students must choose a president, a vice president, one comptroller, and the assembly representatives for their home college. The polls will remain open until Thursday night at midnight. For more information on the candidates, check out Citrus TV's YouTube channel to watch the debate. And Syracuse University will host a virtual degree conferral ceremony on May 10th at 10 a.m. for the class of 2020. The ceremony will include remarks from the chancellor and a performance of the alma mater. As part of the virtual senior week, SU will hold a virtual dance party and class toast. Students will be able to find up-to-date information about the 2020 graduation on the university's new commencement page. The Hall of Languages in Hendricks Chapel are lit up blue in a show of support for healthcare workers. Syracuse is not the only one showing support. Seattle's Space Needle and New York City's Madison Square Garden are among the many showing support for these men and women. The buildings will remain in a blue hue for two weeks to honor those on the front lines of the battle with COVID-19. One of the buildings lit blue is Hendricks Chapel. While their dean isn't inside, he's still finding a way to connect with the community, sharing a message of hope. What we're going to do is have a conversation about how is it that we receive hope and how is it that we receive health in the midst of really difficult times. Congo wants students to shift the focus from what they lost to what they can do to help themselves and others. If we all do our part, if we all look within ourselves and say, what's, what's my role here? How, how can I contribute towards moving us forward as a community? I think that that's helpful. Conkel believes that mindfulness can help students cope. This is our reality. And we don't know if this is another week, another month, two months. We really don't know that at this point. But in the meantime, we can be present where we are and asking ourselves, how can I be my best self today? For more information on this and other faith-based events, visit the Hendricks Chapel website at hendricks.syr.edu. The LGBT Resource Center is continuing to provide support to the LGBTQ plus community online. Despite the office being closed on campus, the Resource Center is encouraging students and staff to participate in events the center is hosting online. This includes virtual drop-in hours, workshops, and lectures. For more information, visit lgbt.syr.edu. Fall registration is continuing this week. Most underclassmen will be picking their classes today and tomorrow. If you don't get into the classes you want, don't worry. Make sure to fill out a waitlist form, but also have a backup schedule ready. Hopefully you can avoid some of those 8 a.m. classes. And two more people died in Onondaga County to COVID-19, bringing the total number of deaths to 11. There are currently 520 cases in the count. That's up 494. Onondaga County Executive Ryan McMahon says that the numbers have been steady with about 20% of cases requiring hospitalization and 8% of cases being placed in an ICU. McMahon says that the data charts are promising. From a planning, preparation, mitigation, uh, and now how the community is doing with what only they can help us with, with the social distancing, I think the community is performing pretty well. Over the weekend, McMahon says that he was aware of some Easter gatherings that did not comply with social distancing regulations, but that he wants to continue to increase the amount of people staying at home so that the county can re reopen sooner. The county executive also added that he is working with an SU professor to track COVID-19 in the sewage system. The COVID-19 pandemic could bankrupt some upstate New York hospitals. Some hospitals may even close. New York State ordered all hospitals to clear out beds for COVID-19 surge, but that surge hasn't hit upstate yet. Now with empty beds and the suspension of elective surgeries, Krauss, St. Joseph's, and Oswego Health are furloughing employees. And New York State Police are reporting a dramatic drop in crime rates since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. Onondaga County alone has seen a decrease in crime by about 51% since the start of March. A spokesman for the Onondaga County Sheriff's Office attributed the drop to the ban on public gatherings and on having less cars on the road. 
This reflects a similar trend nationwide as first responders shift their focus towards battling the coronavirus pandemic. And a grim COVID milestone passed today in New York State. The number of deaths surpassed 10,000 on Easter Sunday. And the terrible news is as terrible as it gets and the worst news I've had to deliver to the people of this state as governor of New York and the worst news I've had to live with on a personal level. However, a sign of hope. New deaths dropped below 700 for the first time in several days. The number of hospitalizations did rise slightly, but Governor Cuomo is still confident they are flattening the curve. The curve continues to flatten. Uh, we talked all along, quote unquote, the experts said that there were two possibilities. You could have a high point and then an immediate drop off, or you could have a plateau. It appears that we have a plateau. It's flattening. It's the flattening of the curve. Cuomo outlined the steps they would take to reopen. We are easing isolation. We want to increase economic activity. That will happen essentially through a recalibration of what are essential workers. Do it carefully, do it slowly, and do it intelligently. More testing and more precautions. And while you're opening that valve, watch the meter. What's the meter? The meter is the infection rate. Cuomo also held a public conference call later with the governors of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Delaware. They're working together to figure out what to open back up first. He indicated schools may need to open first so working parents can send their kids to school without worrying about childcare. And there's 1.8 million coronavirus cases worldwide and almost 118,000 deaths. While most of the world is prepping for another week of quarantines and lockdowns, some countries, like Spain, are cautiously trying to open up again. Around 300,000 workers in Madrid are able to return to work today, as Spain relaxes some of its lockdown restrictions. Factory workers and construction workers will be returning to work. Spain has Europe's highest number of COVID-19 cases. Police officers are handing out face masks in the subway to travelers who don't have them. Italy and Austria might join Spain in relaxing some lockdown restrictions this week. Spain plans to fully lift their lockdown by April 26th at the earliest. And quickly turning to politics, Bernie Sanders today announced his endorsement of Joe Biden. Sanders encouraged his supporters to join with him in voting for the former Democratic vice president. Biden told Sanders he'd need help not just to campaign, but to govern. And finally tonight, a look at how members of our extended Citrus family celebrated this past week's holidays. Many people across the country got creative finding ways to come together. Cedars held on Zoom, churches live streaming mass from living rooms. Even in these difficult times, people found a way. And that's all the time we have on Citrus TV News today. Be sure to tune in. For now, make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Citrus TV News and follow us on Facebook. I'm Augustus LaRue. Stay safe and stay healthy.